and carefully. Also, it's like it seems to be a celestial speed up when we do what we're doing now, or even when you're in proximity, seemingly in body, because when things come out of one another's mouth or this or that, you know, you can it can be be helpful. There's a synergy or or an energy that helps of of having loving brothers around that, are, that will point something out, and so you can go, thank you. <laughs> that was just slipping. <laughs> Uh, it just slipped right in my mind, came right out my mouth, out of this mouth, and I didn't, you know, I was, un- I was, I was not watching my mind. I was not up in my right mind. Thank you for pointing that out. Instead of the picking thing, which, from the ego's perspective, that's how that would get into picking, picking, picking. It's, it's kind of a gratitude because you know your brother is literally your savior, and that's literally helping you, you do that. So. I just felt a real swell of gratitude and probably felt for the first time right now that that um, what a gift in a sense it is that I don't have a place to call my own. I never looked at it that way before. But I can see how easy it is for me to to want a place of my own and to identify with that and somehow to get caught up in that enough that it just can be a distraction from that purpose and function. Well, I think it, there's something a little deeper here is that, that um, I mean, even subtly, I've heard Dorothy say, you know, I'm glad I've got my place in my own. I finally got it the way I like it, and I, can, I might go to Mexico and I've got mm-hmm. a place down there. And then you're kind of saying, I'm grateful not to have a place of my own. And really, what I'm saying, say, what I'm saying is the same thing. The whole, all we have is the concept of place here. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not even. That, that not having a place of your own is a gift to show you something, but just to come down to see the idea that, that even place is just a concept. You see? It's like two ends of a, of a coin. Mm-hmm. Or they say, I'm glad I've got this place to go to, and I, I enjoy being on my own, and this and that, and that's a construct. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of saying, I'm glad that, that I don't have a place of my own. Well, I haven't been, necessarily. But something that you just said makes yeah. me feel like that's you know, that that's really helpful right now. Yeah. For me. Yeah. And I hadn't looked at it in this time. Yeah. But you can what? see what I'm pointing to is that whole idea that place is a concept. You know, it's kind of like that's the transcending point. That way I mean, who was the eye that who is the eye that doesn't, doesn't have, have a place, a place, a place uh, of her own? You see how it does have a place. <laughs> place, right. You can see how free like the mirror. <clears throat> Thing. Yeah, this this is kind of a good example. Well, of we're off <laughs> yeah. So it's another ordering of thoughts too. Yeah. To have a place or not have a place has some value. Yeah, because you don't believe you're a mind yeah. if you believe you have a place. Where's the mind? Have a place. Who, who the has mind a place? Need a place? <laughs> Beverly and Dorothy have yeah. places or don't have places, but the only thing is, there's those are constructs too. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're both the same in a way. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's like, that's where the joy starts. When you start to really see some of this stuff, you start to feel yourself as a mind. The dreamer of the dream that you've been talking about is another way. The dreamer of the dream doesn't have a place. He watches places, because, and he knows that place doesn't exist. I mean, that's what makes it fun to just watch all these images, you know. Yeah. Even this image that seems to move around is still <laughs> just another image. You know? And so there wouldn't even be an identification like... For me, looking at this as having a place, being a place that belongs to me or doesn't belong to me, right. it's just another place. Like, you know, I can turn over this way and see this place, yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's no yeah. difference. It's kind of like you took so-called this place and you said this belongs to me. There comes the idea of ownership. Yes. You see how all we've yes. done is we've tacked ownership onto a particular place. Right. That's another concept, and we've put them together, and I own this. And the opposite would be. The ego to get pride into saying, I don't have a place of my own. You know, you can see yeah, where it, that would be, not, not to say that you're doing that, but to say that how the ego could take that and, and swing the other way and say, I don't believe in ownership. I, or like some of the things out west, you know, rent everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the same air, but it's the swing, yeah. it's the other side, you know. Because it's some value in a certain form. Never be yeah. Holder. yeah, it's a form like content a error. It's still a form content error. Believing that it's better to, to always rent instead of own <laughs> because then you're not tied down. But the concept of ownership and the concept of renting. Yeah. 
the, doing the tying down. And if you give those up, then it's like, wow. <laughs> you can see how freeing this becomes. So that's, I mean, that was kind of the aha with your that for me right now it seems helpful and I hadn't looked at it this way before because of that great thing, that identification. That somehow this can be real helpful to me in terms of not identifying with the body. Because only the body would have any thoughts some place. But what is the this that would be very helpful? Well, I'm not having a point. <laughs> the disidentification is what's helpful. And that's in this instance, I mean, yeah. right? In the mind. The, the yeah. We're, yeah. Seeing, we're the seeing the clarity, yeah. the insight. Yeah. yeah. So you can see where the helpfulness is always, I mean, that's that's the Holy Spirit burst of light in there. That's where the help is. But but the tendency, of course, is, you know, Thank once you get down into form and you believe in form, then you're back talking about stepping stones and this form is more conducive than that form and this and that, and you're still you know, it can be helpful to the mind to lead it to the point, but we're coming to the point right now where we're seeing that just in the instant, the joy of seeing it. Right. Nothing from the past ever helped us see this in this instant. It's just our desire and our willingness and our attention right now to see it, see it. that's bringing it to it. So there's no process involved. It's just you see it or you don't see it. Yeah, right. You're awake or you're asleep. Yeah. Because in my mind, as you were talking, I was thinking, okay, so first you have to become aware, and then once you become aware, you know, it's like yeah. I was making the process, and I'm thinking, no, that it's it's never a process. You either get it or you don't get it. And like Krishna Murti says, if you got it, great. Yeah. If you get it, forget it. Yeah, right. <laughs> then you'll, maybe you'll get it another time. But yeah, that's it. It's, it's that feeling of that burst. Yeah. Like, I, I think of it as like a bursting balloon. Wow. You know, and that just for that one moment. But you see this, you know, like the next time you know that feeling, and it bursts again. It's an amount of feeling. So I want to illuminate that burst. Well, that's what, I mean, that's what our intention is. I want just one instant. Yeah. <laughs> there is, the thing about it, we're working to the the burst, the instant that ends all burst. I mean, <laughs> literally, <laughs> there's no burst more burst after burst. that one. You know, it's the instant <laughs> that gets you into eternity. <laughs> That's right. right. And really having that. So it only is an instant. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not like the instant has to last but I, longer. I, I also think of it as um, we're already there anyway, and we just get a glimpse each time that burst. Is we are back there. But even yeah, when we construct yeah. it, that we get a glimpse. I mean, yeah. it, it's who's still the we, the yeah, we who's the we? Yeah, yeah. Who's the we? So yeah. you know, it's like we keep moving towards that clarity, and that's what I mean. We've just kind of done it with a few examples, but as mm -hmm. we're talking, there may be things that will come to mind of of like, oh, there it is. I was concerned about that. It's just another concept, you know. Mm -hmm. In the end, as we'll work to the very end of this sheet, you know, it gets back to that. I have to be able to to get. To see the image maker mm -hmm. more, clear. more clear, as well as the images. And I mean, the mind is used to seeing the images, but it's not. But it still believes that there's a thinker in there that's real. Mm -hmm. Every time we make a statement, you know, well, eventually, yeah. where'd that come from? The Christ? Well, eventually. <laughs> there's no eventually in the Christ. That that's the thinker, you know. That, that really we need to really be clear on this. And you can see, like Dorothy was saying the other day, the, the other night, that the silence is where you end up. Yeah. Because when you get so clear about that thinker, you know... There's no thoughts. It's, it's still, it's just, you could say the real thoughts, or just this mm -hmm. one still thought, yeah. which is the Christ thought. And what we want to really do, though, is really look at that thinker. And that's where the silence is deafening. Have you ever thought that? The silence is deafening? Yeah. Meaning well, it's undesirable? No, it's, it's just like... I don't know, I can't explain it. Can't You're literally explain. deaf to the world, yeah. in that sense. Yeah, it's a feeling of... 
Responsibility for what is atoned for cannot be yours. The dilemma cannot be resolved except by accepting the solution of undoing. You would be responsible for the effects of all your wrong thinking if it could not be undone. The purpose of the atonement is to save the past in a purified form only. If you accept the remedy for disordered thought, a remedy whose efficacy is beyond doubt, how can its symptoms remain? So this is another way of wording what we just were talking about. Sometimes people say, what does that mean? The purpose of the atonement is to save the past and purify the poor moment. What in the world are we talking about here? Well, let's, let's, go, let's go to our little chart, you know. Here's the past. You can see it's black. <laughs> it's dark down here. It's the wrong mind in the projected world. And here's the atonement. To save the past and purify the form is simply to, to be here, to be the dreamer of the dream, and to simply see that all the images are false and that there's no ordering among those images. You're just watching a bunch of images on the screen. Of course you're defenseless. If, you, if you're just dreaming it and you know that it's all false and it's all past and you're up here living in the present and watching the past from the present, then you're saving the past only in a purified form, in that sense. You're, you know, still we're still talking perceptual. We're not talking out here, mm -hmm. but we're we're talking about saving the past in a purified form. So that's simply being in your right mind. Is to is to not be caught into the figures, not be caught into the ordering of thoughts, you know, the hierarchy of illusions in any way. Just to see it for what it is. Yeah, exactly. That's the purified that's form. That's the purified form. So it's really simple. It's not. Perhaps you have been aware of the lack of competition among your thoughts, which even though they may conflict, can occur together and in great number. You may indeed be so used to this that it causes you little surprise. Yet you are also used to classifying some of your thoughts as more important, larger, or better, wiser, or more productive, and valuable than others. This is true of the thoughts that cross the mind of those who think they live apart. For some are reflections of heaven, while others are motivated by the ego, which but seems to think. So there's a clear thing on that ordering that we're talking about. And it also gets, we're starting to get into that part that we talked about, where the the mind projected out the world, and now it's trying to bring some order into chaos by ordering those images. You know, it's trying to judge in order to bring it some security, some sense of, of wholeness into this chaotic kind of situation. And what is the chaotic situation? It's believing two thought systems that are completely irreconcilable, <laughs> sweeping light and dark, and yet trying to order that first sentence, lack of competition among your thoughts, it may seem like there is competition among my thoughts, but I'm lack of I mean, isn't that the order? Competition among my thoughts for well, it's kind of it's kind of like that. It's the confused um, state of mind where you think one thing, then you think another thing. You, you know. It just happens so often. I think he's basically just saying in the first sense too that that you're you're so accustomed and familiar with this back and forth. You should do this. No, I'll do that. I think so and so is great. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, I, <laughs> they just said this to me. You know, it's like. So you don't see that it's competition of thoughts. You see that it's lack of competition of thoughts. What you just described. Well, they're they're out. They're just simultaneously. That they occur together in a great number, you know. I mean, 